Hey guys, this is Aldo with Daniel and Matthew from Bloodlines, and you're listening to the Kingdom Core Podcast. Let your voice be heard. I will spend my days declaring your name. Hey guys, it's Sean here. Thank you for tuning in to the Kingdom Core Podcast. This is episode number eight. We talked today with a few of the members from Bloodlines. They are a metalcore band out of texas uh down south in texas and they just released their new ep havel featured on face down records uh we talked with them about uh theology what havel means talked to them uh, a lot about jesus a lot about metal uh that's kind of what this podcast is about and we also chatted about uh the origin of bloodlines and how they became a band and uh, how their sound has progressed throughout. Uh, it was a great conversation. They've been one of my new favorite up-and-coming metalcore bands in the scene for quite a while, so it was awesome to sit down with them and chat and uh, hear their hearts for uh, for ministry and for the metal scene as a whole. Just a couple quick things before we get into it. If you haven't joined, we have a Patreon account where every single penny donated goes right back into this podcast bought a ring light with a table a little tables uh mic just covering costs it takes to run this podcast uh so we're really grateful for our patrons thank you uh we will also have links to our social medias and websites in the bio and if you are on apple music uh please go and give us a five-star rating leave a review that really helps with the algorithm in pushing it out to more people yeah, let's get into our interview with Bloodlines. <laughs> this is interesting. I think this will be the first interview I've heard where with a band where the singer is not present. You know, I think yeah. it'll be it'll be cool. <laughs> hey, we still got me. I count. Oh yeah, that's true. That's true. <laughs> yeah, I didn't mean to disrespect you like that. It's okay. No, it's okay. okay. He needs it. it. <laughs> we, need be, we need to be humbled. <laughs> thank you thank you brother actually that's probably a, a good place to start like um do you guys want to introduce yourselves your names and then what you guys do in the bank my name's daniel uh i play guitar and do like backup screams live stuff nice and my name is aldo and i do play bass my name is matthew i um I play drums and I sing clean vocals. Awesome, cool, yeah. <laughs> That's like Mr. Aaron Gillespie over here. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no. So thanks for being on, guys. Uh, we really appreciate it. We're excited to have you guys. Uh, congrats on the new EP. It's pronounced yes. Hevel, right? Yeah, it's okay. Hevel, Hevel, it's, Hevel, uh, Hevel I, or Hevel? Yeah. Okay, because people are saying Hevel, and I'm like, I'm pretty sure it's Hevel. <laughs> yeah. Could uh, could you guys take us through with what uh, what is Hevel? What what's it mean? What was the inspiration for the name? Yeah, I think Matthew should. Okay, y'all I think want Matthew me to take this? answer that question really well. Yeah, go ahead. <clears throat> yeah. So, so um, Hevel spawned from actually Aldo found the word online, and uh, we wrote Colder. And based on like uh, that, like pre-chorus with every breath, I know death's getting closer. Um, Aldo was just like, "Hey guys, I found this really cool word. I think y'all should look into it." Um, he, I don't even think he meant for any like like song title or, or EP title or anything, but he just found it. I went in, and uh, after I read about it, I just took a super deep dive into the Book of Ecclesiastes. And um, I got a lot of information and I can pretty much just read you what I wrote. I, I essentially did a word study as soon as Aldo sent it. So the way one defines Havel determines how much of a pessimist or a radical somebody is. Um, and there is an underlying uh, ever present definition, um, meaningless. That's that's the first one uh, in the scriptures. You see Havel of Havel. Everything is Havel. So it means meaningless. That's that's kind of the, the general understanding of what Havel means. But uh, there's a difference between saying everything is meaningless and saying something is just difficult to understand. So I don't know, like, am I good to go into this word study here? Is, is that cool? Do yeah, it. Let's sure do it. it. 
Yeah. Okay. Cool. So there are five popular yeah. translations <laughs> of the word Havel. <laughs> <laughs> So, one is the literal translation. In Aramaic, uh, Hevel means breath, breeze, or vapor. And in the Babylonian Talmud, a central text of rabbinic Judaism, and the primary source of Jewish law and theology, it says the world exists only because of the breath of children, the Hevel of children. Um, so, we can actually connect this to Isaiah fifty-seven thirteen. It says, when you cry out, let your collection of idols deliver you. But the wind, ruach, breath, spirit, will carry them all away. A breath will take them. But he who puts his trust in me shall possess the land and shall inherit my holy mountain. Here we see Havel as a breeze. And it's also in a parallel to ruach, which is kind of crazy. We kind of just landed on that one. Yeah, you guys use um, both of those. <laughs> yeah, but here uh in that definition it's it's literally um correct, but like we miss out on the metaphor of Hevel. Um it would be like translating the English word cool um into like hey, I really think your outfit is a low temperature today. <laughs> oh yeah, I know what you mean. <laughs> so we miss out on a lot of like really like important things if we just take the literal definition if we don't really think about mm. uh, the words around it behind it um, second the second definition is futile not lasting or fleeting like a breath or a breeze and that comes and and it comes and goes um, the scripture reference for this is actually psalm 144 verse 4 it says man is like a breath his days are like a passing shadow uh, and that's havel King Solomon, the builder of the first temple in Jerusalem, had a prophetic vision that the temple would one day be destroyed. He cried out, Hevel of Hevels, everything is Hevel, nothing will last. And uh, the, you can also see the name Abel in this, which is really cool. So Abel in Hebrew is actually Hevel. And um, Hevel mm. or Abel, his life was actually mm. very fleeting and very short. He was the very first person that was murdered. And um, it's it's much like the the breath, the fleeting breath that he was named after. Um, am I still good? Audio, video? Yeah, this is good. Bible study here on the Kingdom Core podcast. Yeah, I love this, dude. <laughs> hey, that's right. The third definition is vanity. Is that it? <clears throat> and it's oh. not in the sense about caring about self-appearance, but it's actually in the sense that everything is worthless. Um, everything is meaningless and we are merely just flesh and bone waiting to die. Um, it's, it's like, um, everything is vanity. Uh, that's one of the other popular, uh, trans translations mm. for Havel of Havel's. Everything is Havel. Everything's vanity. It's, it's all vain. What's the, what's the point? Mm -hmm. Um, here we get into the kind of, uh, ethereal definitions and I really, really love these so much. So. Havel, the fourth definition of Havel is to be beyond grasp, both physically and intellectually, or absolutely incomprehensible. So instead of there being no meaning, as in vanity, there is a meaning, but you cannot possibly understand it. So all is beyond grasp, Havel, just like being in pursuit of the wind. No one can catch the wind and no one can see it, but you can grasp it. You can, you can feel it. You know it's there. Um, so we can actually look to Ecclesiastes 114 and Solomon says, I have seen all the works that are done under the sun and indeed all is vanity and grasping for the wind. So you see the men, you see them toiling in the land, you see them doing all of these things. And, and you say like, like what's it? You're grasping at the wind. You're never going to attain the goal that you're setting out to, to achieve. Um, so that is beyond grasp. Physically and intellectually, you can't possibly understand why something is happening. Hevel. And number five, this is the scariest one of them all. Hevel. Things are worse than meaningless. They are worse than worthless. They are absolutely absurd. And this definition comes from uh, Ecclesiastes 8.14. Uh, it says this, there is a vanity which occurs on earth that there are just men to whom it happens according to the work of the wicked. Again, there are wicked men to whom it happens according to the work of the righteous. I said that this also is vanity. So 
you have the rain falling on the just and the unjust alike. And it's all vanity. It's all absurd. It's, it doesn't make any sense. Why? And this is the question that a lot of atheists or agnostics uh, pose. It's like, if God is so good, why is there so much evil? Or if you're such a good person, if you're a good Christian and, and you follow all the rules, you go to church every Sunday, how come you have cancer? It's like, whoa, um, it's it's kind of scary to think about this definition. Um, yeah. But um, that's just because sometimes life and the circumstances that we find ourselves in is just unfair based on our human parameters and knowledge of the scales of eternity. This life is here one moment and it's gone in the next. And what we have is our purpose. All that we're left with at the end of the day is like what we stood for, what we did. Oh, oh, no, oh it's gone. lost him. Uh, it lost <laughs> he'll find his way back. <laughs> <laughs> All right. It's that, that dorm room internet. <laughs> I know, for real. Seriously, though. <laughs> Dang, I wanted to hear the rest of that. <laughs> <laughs> I wanted to hear how he closed. Yep. That's really cool. Uh, that's really good insight. That's great. That is um, that's definitely a lot more thought out than um, than a lot of bands uh, think yeah. out there. J- just the, like the concept of their albums, like right. Um, so that's really cool to hear. Uh, how how long after um, Auto you found that word and Matthew did that word study? How long after that? Did you think, oh, we should use this for the EP title? Um, <clears throat> well, I guess it was kind of, I, I think we've always kind of had a hard time, like, choosing a title. Even for Hostile Minds, we just, I know we went back and forth so many times, and it always comes down to, like, the last, <laughs> probably the last possible uh, amount of time that we have to, to name something. So uh, I remember Jason was kind of asking us like, hey, what are y'all thinking about the name, you know, for the EP? You know, I, I, I want to kind of start getting the process rolling for this. And um, that's kind of where we brought the, the, the word Havel again back onto the conversation. We were like, why don't we just name it this? I mean, you know, we a lot of our songs kind of have that same definition as the EP title for Havel. So we were like, you know what? I think this would be perfect. And so we all kind of took a vote, right? We had different choices, but that's that's where we landed on was was Hevel for the for the name. You mentioned how Jason uh was like asking for the name. Uh again, congrat I know it's been announced for a while, but congratulations for Thank uh, you. for face being down. signed Thank to face you. down. Yes. Um I remember I found a all uh, uh I haven't actually been able to tell anyone uh, any followers of Kingdom Core this story, but um on Kingdom Core, I was supposed to premiere Colder. I don't know if you guys remember that. Yes. And oh, yeah, uh, it was Thursday right. night, like eight hours before I was going to like get up and uh, post it and premiere it. And then I received a message from you guys saying, don't post it. We just signed a face down tonight. Yes. <laughs> but you can't tell anyone for three months because... And I was just <laughs> like, oh my gosh, this is amazing. Like I am so happy for you guys. But when I didn't yeah. post it the next day, people were asking if there was bad blood between Kingdom Core and Bloodlines. Really? I actually oh, had a few no. people ask. Wow. And they're like, what happened? Why didn't you post it? And I'm like, just <laughs> stay tuned. Like, <laughs> we're all we're good. Really they they went a different direction, a much better direction, might I, <laughs> might I add. <laughs> yeah, we had, the same, we had the same thing where, I mean, I remember we had set up a release date and everything with you and like, the day that it was supposed to be released, everyone was like, hmm, what happened? You know, like what? <laughs> Why I remember that. Yeah. yeah. yeah as, so. as a follower of Sean's page, I mean, we were friends then at that point. But like, even being a fan of you guys, and I was like so pumped for new Floodlines music. <laughs> and I'm like, I was so ready for it. And then, yeah, I, I was on that fan perspective of like, what happened? <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah, it was, it, was, it was such a small time in between. Like, if it had been like a week or something, then you know. But yeah. <laughs> and it was uh. it was really like I guess that whole story with Colder was just crazy because that was just like we had been talking with uh, I had been kind of messaging with Jason just kind of here and there, and uh, I emailed him Colder just just to see kind of like what he thought about it, and then that that 
that conversation like really turned into like, hey, why don't y'all just put this down on 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 face down? And we were like, oh my gosh, okay, you know, like that's that's it happened so fast. So you know, it was <laughs> it was such a, a crazy time I think for us because we were like, oh my gosh, like we're really doing this, you know, we're gonna be on yeah. face down, like we're gonna put colder <laughs> out, but we had already had you know this whole other plan on doing it ourselves. So it was. It was it was insane, just how quickly it all happened. When when you were talking with Jason, was that like a really close proximity to the night that you guys signed? Was that that conversation you were? It having? was like within the same. I mean, it was within the same was, like weeks or so. Like it was just yeah. such a for like me, a week to two weeks. I think. <laughs> yeah, so like cool. it was so close. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> We'd already submitted it to like get distributed and stuff, and so we had to like oh, go wow, back yeah. and cancel everything and like. Oh man redo it yeah yeah we were gonna upload it on spotify um all, all the stuff like like how we already had done and been doing diy aldo sends us a screenshot he's like guys guys <laughs> and we, we check and then uh literally like the way aldo said like jason was just like hey we really like this song uh would you consider releasing it with a uh, face down and we're just like of yes <laughs> would, would you guys consider it <laughs> yeah, it's like I'm not offering. <laughs> and then, and then um, he followed up uh, with another email. Pretty soon after, he said, "Oh, I didn't realize you guys had already set a release date. Um, would you possibly consider maybe uh, signing, releasing this one, still standalone DIY, and then in the future, whatever you guys can come up with later?" And we were like, "We're pulling it. Absolutely, we're pulling it all right now. We're deleting the Spotify <laughs> like." Get rid of the distro kid launch pad. Get rid of it. <laughs> yeah. That's so awesome. It was such a long time. I feel like, uh, like obviously you were saying like three months or so, I think before it was announced that you guys were signed. Um, that even at that point, like obviously you had colder ready. Mm-hmm. Did how much of the EP was done at that point? Or was it just colder? Um, we just had colder, I believe. Yeah. I think Daniel, yeah. Daniel had some ideas, I think. I think I had the structure of Lotus pretty much done. Like okay. the backbone yeah. of that one written. Yeah. Sweet. Mm-hmm. Just with the way, I mean, we're jumping too far ahead. I don't know, but just the way that it came out, the, the album art guys yes. is like, I want to hear about that. Um, I need to yeah, hear Like how that. did that come together and. Uh, well, work with? we worked with, uh, this guy from Australia. I think his name is Ben. Uh, he does, or like his production is called third eye visuals or something. Okay, he okay. does a lot of like the, the alpha wolf, like music videos. Oh, and, nice. Okay. Um, we had talked to him about a visualizer because we really liked one that he did. And we had just, you know, he did the colder visual visualizer. And then later on, when we had a whole EP to to submit, we kind of just like hit him up, like, "Hey, like, we have no budget. Like, do you have a photo like laying around somewhere that you can sell us, like, real quick?" <clears throat> and he was like, "Well, I do, kind of, but like, I don't mind putting it in a little bit of work for like, you know, you know, if he can throw some money, like, invest in it." And so we're like, "All right, fine. Like, we'll we'll try to like scrap up some change and." uh he kind of just did his own thing like we told him like basically what the album was about like how we gave him you know the definitions what we were talking about in each song each title track the lyrics did matthew give him the entire word study <laughs> uh we did no no no, no. <laughs> it was like a condensed it was a really I'm condensed just version of it matthew, if he's not like, a christian he's like yo these dudes are nuts yeah. <laughs> and then he pretty much just took it from there he did his own thing and we were like that's sick like yeah and then that was pretty much it it might might be a spoiler alert, but I uh, in the coming week or two, I was going to start posting some stuff on my Instagram page about like my my top ten favorite cover arts of the year, and I, I think you guys uh, might might have hit that top spot. <laughs> oh, thank you, bro. Thank you. Yeah, it, it's it's one of the best covers I've seen in years. I yeah, would say. that's wow. That's definitely it is really the, sick. Nice. Thank you. Yeah, that's definitely the best. <laughs> thank you. I think that's my favorite uh, 
cover art that we've had for anything that yeah. we've done for sure mm-hmm. for sure yeah yeah and no, um so you're talking about the body of your work there uh let's go back to the origin story of bloodlines because you guys were correct me if i'm wrong seeds of hope before yeah yes. take it yeah. away daniel <laughs> that was yeah. that was the daniel era that was pre okay aldo pre matthew <laughs> so yeah daniel, alexis, alexis, and I alexis were, was back then starting. too right yeah. yes okay he, he played bass back then oh, was he not okay. the screamer back then no nope. No, he did like okay. uh, backup vocals and stuff, but he, he didn't even do the vocals on like the the EP that you guys did as Bloodlines, like the first one, right? He did like but, one part of one song, like he had a verse, like a guest feature on one of our own yeah. songs. No, but, okay. Yeah. Did you want to know anything like specific or like how? Yeah, we let's hear the or... origin story oh, okay. of Bloodlines. <laughs> let's hear like how Seeds of Hope ended in the <laughs> Bloodlines. Like, <laughs> um. So. Alexis and I had known each other for a pretty long time. Uh, we went to like the same youth service or whatever, and we kind of listened to the same music. And so we just became friends and we had started another band before Seeds of Pope. And that one kind of came up and it was just local stuff. Uh, and then kind of that one kind of ended and we got a little heavier, went into Seeds of Pope. I kind of took more, in charge of like the writing aspect of you know the instruments and stuff and that kind of uh got bigger and he played bass um we did like a couple eps i think maybe um and then towards the end of that um our vocalists at the time were like leaving and we had a hard time like keeping a vocalist down not anything bad, but like, you know, they would like start, they were starting their lives and, you know, right. getting married or going to school or, you know, doing things. Uh, and so we kind of like hit this weird place where it was either drastically change the how we do it, like the lineup, or just kind of just call it quits. And Alexis and I really, really loved doing this and we still like believed in it. And so we didn't want to stop. So we would kind of just do little things here and there. And and it had reached, I think, its peak, uh, that band, I mean. And we kind of just left it where it was, but still started, like, we're still continuing writing music and hanging out and, like, trying to see what we can do. It's so long ago that I'm, like, losing track <laughs> of years and stuff. Um, I'm not sure if we had, if I had written a song for Seeds of Hope, that was a lot heavier. That was a lot different. Um, that included Alexis just as the vocalist. I think I think that was Flesh. That was the re- the song Flesh was towards the end of Seeds of Hope, the beginning of Bloodlines. Okay. Um, I think at that point we did have two vocals, and then we kind of shift shifted uh, to Bloodlines. And then that's, sorry, that's when we started like having trouble keeping a drummer, having trouble keeping a vocalist. Um, And so we drastically changed the lineup. Alexis jumped on vocals uh, because he had already been doing it for a while, like at least doing backups or um, whenever we went to go record the first Bloodlines EP, um, our vocalist at the time wasn't really a vocalist. Um, a good friend of ours, he like, you know, one, he had the heart for it, um, but he had just started. And so what we would do is we would track Alexis on vocals as like the anchor and then have our other vocalists like fill in the parts. And then in the studio, we realized like, man, this guy can do it. Like he's really good, you know? And, that was like the blossoming of like, maybe this guy can do vocals like later on, uh, kind of foreshadowing, you know, what were, what was to come later on. Mm -hmm. Um, then there was this time later on that, I mean, we obviously didn't have a basis anymore. So I think we hit up Aldo, Alexis hit up Aldo, like to, to fill in for a show or something. And we had this other basses, all right, this other drummer at this time, but I don't know. He like, I don't remember who it was. Do you remember? 
Was it? <laughs> I don't I, remember. I don't remember. Who it was, but he's listening now. <laughs> he's like, what? <laughs> no, I think he had like. <laughs> Because we've had so many like fill ins, and then yeah. it's, yeah, it's like yeah. so hard to, to yeah. remember like who was actually in it, and then who had gone, or like who played this show. And, for and sure, for sure. Like Matthew was a fill in for a while too. Like he had his own thing. Uh, it's funny because Aldo and Matthew were in their own band, like on their own, doing their own thing, and we asked yeah. Aldo to like, hey, like fill in or whatever, and then we were like, hey, you know what? Him. Aldo, why don't you just stay? Like, you already know the songs, like, you know? <laughs> and then Matt, Aldo was like, hey, I know a drummer. Like, if we ever need one, like, maybe Matthew can come over and play for us. And we're like, okay, like, sure. And so that's kind of basically how it started. And then, like, I think it really was about, about finding the right people, like, to do this project with. Mm-hmm. Um, because I think, I feel like we've always had really, really good potential, but it never really, like, went anywhere. Like, mm-hmm. um, I don't, I don't know. It was, it just wasn't like the right fit and not until like we all before, like started to talk to each other and like, you know, realized that we we're all kind of on the same page, uh, musically or not even musically because we all listen to, you know, different kind of things, but we all add something, <laughs> um, that, that makes us what we are. Mm-hmm. And, I think it took us getting together and like, you know, God deciding like, all right, like this is where, this is the time or whatever. And it kind of just, just recently kind of blew up, I guess. But yeah. It's been a long time coming. Um, yeah. We've been, Alex yeah. and I have been playing music for like probably 10 years. Oh, wow. wow. Yeah, yeah. With our first band. Yeah. Yeah. I think the, the the story of our band has always been the amount of people that have been in our <laughs> oh, band. <yeah. laughs> I mean, we've had so many member changes; it's crazy. So, I mean, if you look back far enough, you'll see people that are like, "Who's yeah. that?" <laughs> or you see, you know, like if someone happens to have an old promo, you're like, "Wait, you're not there?" <laughs> or "Wait, who's this?" Yep. And you know, we still get sometimes we get messages now and then where they're like, "Hey, what happened to this guy?" Mm-hmm. Or you know, so. But like Daniel said, I think, you know, once the four of us collectively, once we, you know, it was just us four, I think it just clicked, you know, I think sometimes that's what it takes. Um, Having the right people, like Daniel said, and I think too, like on a spiritual level, I feel like the four of us really connect, Yeah. you know, uh, as, as believers, I think all of us have the same heart for what we do and uh, why we do it and i feel like that was probably the most important Mm -hmm. thing definitely is making sure that all four of us were Mm -hmm. uh on the same page as christians you know as believers Mm -hmm. uh to make sure that that chemistry was also there for sure for the four of us yeah and it so it's been the four of you guys since uh like basically the beginning of the process for hostile minds Kind of yes, because like, I guess there like, was a couple like singles Daniel early, said, Matthew, like, like Babylon. Was that was yeah? That all you guys? That was no, no. Matthew joined, I think, either during Hostel Minds or after Hostel Minds. Okay. I'm not too I, sure. I, I remember. I remember. So I think uh, we, sh- we showed Matthew a song. I think no, Matt Daniel, Daniel like, remembers. Right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so um. um yeah. 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 So it all actually started when they asked me to fill in for a show. Um, they were playing for the first time at the Dirty Dog Bar in Austin, Texas. <laughs> and I was like, oh, this is a pretty big show. Uh, this is like really like it's a good opportunity, especially for a, a band coming from deep South Texas. And then um, I was like, where's your drummer? Like, how, how come he can't play it? And then they were like, oh, he has a I don't know if I want to say it or not. He he. He we just edit decided it. to. <laughs> he, he had a fishing he competition. Had, yeah, he had something to do. <laughs> he had a fishing competition, and um, I just thought, like, oh man, I think he's making a mistake. I will fill in. Um, I, I I would I would hate <laughs> for you guys to lose out on that kind of an opportunity. Um, that that show ended up turning into another opportunity in Waco. So we went to Austin and then we went to Waco and then like, okay, now I had two songs under or two shows under my belt with bloodlines. Did there was he have another two show fishing maybe, competitions? 
<laughs> no, no, I think shortly think... after he had quit. Like he quit. Okay. Yeah. He quit shortly after that. Yeah. yeah, pretty much immediately after I had accepted that show. Um we went in, we practiced for the first time, and uh his drums were gone. His drums were gone from the practice room. And uh uh, I, I I guess these guys are praying really, really hard. I didn't expect it, but um, I filled in for another show like two months later. And by that time, um, um, what's it called? Um, oh my gosh, Deadlock. Deadlock had already released. I was like, mm. this song is so nice. This song is like nasty. Uh, I'm genuinely a fan of Bloodlines. <laughs> like, like I'm excited to be filling in. And then after that, um, Aldo personally had showed me Disconnect in in the car on the way up. And I was like, this is a cool song. It's really unique. Uh, I feel like Bloodlines has like like a niche that they could go into. And then um, they just so happened to uh, be recording in the studio in Houston, Texas. That's where I was from. That's kind of why like I didn't initially join the band at the start because um, we had four hours of uh, travel distance. Mm -hmm. So I didn't, I didn't want to give him my yes and then be unreliable or, or just absent entirely. But I came in and I heard Esh in the studio. Oh, that's I, heard Esh, I heard Esh and I was, was... like, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I remember that day. So I heard Esh and then I turned around and I was like, okay, I'm in the studio here. Like these guys are like some of my best friends now. Um, I went home that night, I think. And then I just texted Aldo, like, hey, can I join Bloodlines? <laughs> <laughs> and he was like, bro, are you serious? And then, like, immediately I was added to the uh, – nice, we made dude. a brand-new group chat just yes. for, for the fun of it. Bloodlines for real. Oh, that's great. Then, uh, we still have that, we still have that group chat. <laughs> that's it's why it's still our that. group chat name. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome uh, so i may have missed the detail so hostile minds was recorded without you matthew or did you I, track any I of got, it i got to hostile minds right at the mid like second to midway point i actually remember i i had a little bit of a say in like naming babylon um because we were, we were all still using like dummy tracks and like uh just fill in names and then they're like what should we call it because it was already called babylon like just by accident oh yeah and then i was like man the whole song is about like being persecuted and then i looked up where babylon was and it's modern day iraq and i was like guys let's just keep babylon um mm. i remember we were getting the demos back from our producer for end of days and for new age and for um lineage i remember like like being around when those had already like been done and tracked by the guys. And then I was actually able to be a part of spiritual warfare. Um, and that's actually me singing the chorus in spiritual warfare. I thought it was. That's yeah, why I asked. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. I, I had kind of got in like right on time to, to get a little bit, a little bit of my voice in there. Um, but we, we hadn't actually anticipated me becoming like a, a genuine official clean singer. Uh, it was just an idea. They were like, "You want to, you want to try singing on spiritual warfare?" And I was like, "Sure." That's and awesome. It turned out sick. It, I know it turned out great. Um, oh, I wanted awesome. to go back to Babylon because uh, it's got the fi <laughs> it's got the <laughs> Chris already knows where I'm going. You all know where I'm going with this. It's got the iconic <laughs> "Stop Jesus Christ" breakdown, <laughs> and it is literally when you turn into a meme. <laughs> yes, I did, and <laughs> and uh, I just. I, I adore that song so much, or that whole album, but especially that song. Mm -hmm. Did you guys, like, I just got to hear, how did that breakdown come to be? Like, were you guys like, <laughs> we have to scream Jesus Christ and then have a breakdown here? I think I, that... I don't remember. I think that I tracked I think it the, was definitely on purpose. Okay. Yeah, I tracked <laughs> the guitars. The, the, the music stuff was done. And then... um. I think I left and like take a nap or something. And then by the time I came back, the vocals were pretty much done. And I was listening to it back and I listened to that part. I was like, okay, I get it. Like, that's cool. Yeah. Go yeah. for it. 
And then you I'm guys, when uh, when I heard Lotus the first time, and you guys screamed Yahweh and did it, I'm like, they did it again! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we had to stop it were somehow. You, no. Were you guys trying to like do something like that again? Are you trying to make that your signature? No. no. It just came out. No, I love I it. No, definitely I not. absolutely love it. Cause that one I remember, Alexis and I were, were just talking, and we were like, man, what if we just started off a song screaming Yahweh? And he was like, let's do it, bro. Let's do it. I love how you guys just like kick into a breakdown to start like the whole album or like the EP. It's so good. Oh, but yeah. I remember hearing it and it was probably like three hours before Sean made the little post about it. <laughs> I think I actually got it up first, but I had the exact same idea. I was just like, this is like the same thing. I love it. It was, I love how worshipful you guys are in, mm-hmm. in your music. It's, like it's something that we get less and less of these days and now it's it's to the point where it's actually like it's super super refreshing to mm. to hear Thank you, you guys just like put out this super worshipful music even with hostile minds but just to keep it in in uh Havel, now that i know how to say it um <laughs> yeah yeah it's i go. just love it yeah Thank it you. is really refreshing i think one thing that I kind of wanted to maintain in the band is I didn't ever want us to be afraid to say the name of Jesus mm, in our music. Um, and I know that's something that me and Alexis talked about a lot back when we were writing Hostile Minds. Cause you know, I know the, I guess maybe the culture that we live in now is uh, you know, it, it's, I guess a lot more believers are afraid yeah, you know, to to maybe say the name of Jesus or really take a side on where they stand with their faith. So I, you know, Alexis and I have always been uh, like, man, let's take a side. Mm-hmm. You know, like if we're really, if we say who we say we are, let's just let's just be it. You know, so that's why you know we we're not afraid. And I think I think in this EP we probably say the name of God probably more than in hostile minds, but you know, we're, that's something that we don't, we do it on purpose, but we don't force Mm -hmm. it, you know, like with Yahweh or any other uh, part in Havel where you hear us say the name of God, it's just, it's just natural for us. You know, like it just kind of, it comes out natural for us to to say that. And uh, you know, it's, it's something that I feel like sets us apart. I feel like, recently we've been getting a lot of messages with people just really appreciative, you know, of us not being afraid to, to be so bold with our faith and our music. And, uh, and, and I appreciate that, Mm -hmm. you know, and I appreciate that people like that and they're drawn to it almost. Mm -hmm. I feel, you know? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. That's just so cool. There's just, there, there's so many bands in the scene that are just, uh, I mean, Aldo, you were talking about how you listened to the Jason Wisdom episode, and he was talking about how, like, if in 2021, if if you're not making it abundantly clear that you are a Christian band, you're you're not a Christian band. Like, doesn't mean they're bad. Doesn't doesn't mean they're not Christians, but they're not a Christian band. And so it's just so refreshing to see you guys oh, just being so bold. Um, so and one one thing you said really stood out to me that I wanted to say was that it comes so naturally that it doesn't even feel forced. And that's Mm -hmm. what I love because I feel like in the secular metal scene, uh, Christian metal is looked at as like, Oh, it's cringe. It's so forced, you know, Um, there, there was that whole Christ core era where like people were just throwing it in and it almost didn't even sound natural uh, sometimes, but with you guys, you guys are writing worship music, so it's going to come out. And I just absolutely love that. So I want to uh, I want to applaud you guys for that. Thank yeah. you, Sean. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Yeah. And awkward pause. <laughs> Sorry, I'm trying to trying to think of something to say. Yeah, this is good. we have this in every single episode. There's we a do. point where Sean finishes a point, and then I'm like, "How do I continue this?" <laughs> Uh, oh, I have um, a story about Colder. Can I can I tell it? <laughs> okay. Okay. So, yeah. um yeah. when Colder was releasing uh for you guys listening, if you guys ha- are on Facebook and you are not part of the Face Down Family Appreciation Club, it is the best <laughs> private group on Facebook and you 
you have to join it. It, it is truly the best. But uh, it's the second best next to the Kingdom Core Patreon. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh, no. Sorry, horrible plug. <laughs> what, all five members? <laughs> Two of them being us. <laughs> yeah. I think we're at seven now. Okay. Yeah, uh, that was good. Um, so in that group, we uh, we were doing this thing called the 24-7 stream team, where whenever a new Face Down band mm. would uh, be releasing new music, specifically a single, we would stream the crap out of it <laughs> um on yeah. spotify or apple music we would on uh, like i had so i had two spotify accounts i had like a free one and then i had a uh i, I don't even use spotify so i don't even know what the paid version is <laughs> yeah, called two accounts. but because i worked at <laughs> starbucks i got free uh <laughs> free spotify <laughs> so i um I would play it on my phone on Spotify Pro when I wouldn't be listening to music. And then 24-7 that whole week, I was uh, streaming it from my then-girlfriend, now-wife's laptop and her phone. So when she got her Spotify 2021 wrapped, her number one song was Colder. And she's like, Sean, I love this wow. song, but that's not accurate. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> that's hilarious. That's funny. No, <laughs> you're ruining my stats. Yeah. <laughs> so I told her yeah. I would uh, tell you guys that. <laughs> Thank you. Well, we appreciate, appreciate her sacrifice. <laughs> no, she loves you guys yeah. too. You're, you guys are one of her favorite metalcore bands. Thanks. Man. Aww, well, thank yeah, you. no. Um, also, thank you. Yeah. Actually, now that I just got the CD like a few days ago, uh, I had it in the car yesterday, and my wife's like, Oh, is this Bloodlines? And like, because like <laughs> she could see Havel on the on the screen. Nice. Like, yeah, that's great. Now, obviously, you guys got signed this year. Was it this year? I feel like it was. I can't remember exactly when it was announced because it was such really a long gap year. between the yeah. release. But I think we um, got signed around this time of uh, year last, last year. year. Okay, we didn't like announce it until. I think January or something, January, or when colder, so whenever yeah. colder came yeah. out. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So, like, obviously, twenty 2020 twenty and twenty twenty one, not many shows happening. But have you guys heard anything, or are you guys planning on? Is there like a face down fest coming up sometime that you guys might be playing? I don't know. I mean, it, right now, I think I'll. I guess I'll. I'll answer this since I kind of do a lot of this for us. Okay. But um, so. Like, I, I'm pretty sure, you know, like how every other band uh, during COVID, during the pandemic, it was really hard for us. I mean, we didn't do anything. Mm. So now that, that we're kind of back to normal-ish, I would say, is now when we're, you know, we're starting to get opportunities um, more recently. Mm. Uh, as far as a Face Down Fest, I don't know yet, yeah. <laughs> truthfully. <Okay. laughs> I'm hoping just as much as everybody else that there is, because that's been like a life goal for me is to play face down fest. Oh, man. <laughs> yeah. Alexis and I are, are like always dreaming of that day mm -hmm. to be there and, and playing for face down fest. But um, I mean, honestly, we're just thankful that we can even play any shows at all right now mm -hmm, at this yeah. time. Cause that's like, I mean, to me, that's like probably my favorite part of being in this band is the live shows. I love to play live. I mean, that's just, it's, that's my favorite part of being uh, in Bloodlines is being able to play with these guys and, you know, meet people and just form those relationships. So just the fact that, you know, we're getting opportunities now and things are starting to pick up again mm -hmm. for us is, it's, it's awesome, man. I'm, I'm excited for the things that, that we have coming up for 2022, which I cannot tell you Okay. Yeah. So, the, and recently <laughs> I saw some footage. Uh, it was like two months ago or so. Were you guys playing like a like a youth event, like, like a youth conference thing? Yes. That that was actually yes. So that was like our first show yeah. back. Um, our at the church that I go to here, uh, we do a youth conference every year, and uh, one of the youth pastors there that um was it him yeah one of our youth pastors he was like hey uh what do y'all think about having bloodlines you know perform in the after party and i was like 
Ooh, you sure about <laughs> that? <laughs> you sure you you sure you want to do that? And he was like, Yeah, man. Like you know, it'll be different. It'll be cool. You know, y'all just play a couple songs, and we'll have you guys play last. You know, that type of deal. And so we were like, I asked the guys. I was like, Hey, you know, y'all down to do it? Because truthfully, we like never play yeah. churches. Like that's probably the least. Uh, that's probably the least that we've ever done is playing at churches. Well, at least, you know, since I've been in the band. Um, so we were, I mean, we were excited, but truthfully, I was, I was a little scared. I was like, man, I don't even know what to expect right now. Like I, it, it can be, we were like, all right, let's do it. it like, or I love just it, ended you know? um, so. being a youth leader for the last four years, um, this current year. And I like, I've made some metal products myself, but it's, it's funny trying to, trying to talk to the kids about, uh, the music that I listen to because like most I feel like most people under the age of like 18, 19, even 20 <laughs> don't really listen to metal much like yeah. like it, it's just like that whole demographic shift and so yeah, it's funny because like there's a few of them uh, in the youth group that I showed and they're actually there was one guy that regularly listened to metal but all the other ones that I talked to they're all just like they're like, oh no, metal, blah, blah. and then the, a couple of them I show, and they're like, oh, this is like, this is super sick. It's not something I would listen to regularly. So I was curious. Like I thought it would have been the best thing ever when I was back in youth group. Oh yeah, <laughs> band, oh, like yeah. you guys hopped up on stage and played. But man, uh, yeah, it, it looked like they were into it. Just from it was the a, a really fun yeah, show. And, yeah. That that's probably the best. That's probably to me this year, you know, the shows that we've played so far, that's probably been my that's favorite one. Cool. I mean, they were just, they were so into it. It was just so fun to watch them. Did I mean, the kids mosh? A lot of these kids don't even know. It, yeah. It that's like the thing. It. A lot of these kids don't <laughs> even know. They don't even know what a mosh pit <laughs> is, but they just kind of started Jumping like, around. like pushing oh, each that's other, great. you know, and then it, it, one thing leads to another and then they're all just like pushing each other. You know, it, it was just so much fun to see them have yeah. fun, yeah. Yeah. you know? And, uh, but yeah, that was such a cool experience. I, I know I got to talk to, you know, some people afterwards and they were like, bro, I loved it. Like, man, you guys are awesome. And, you know, they've never even heard us before, but just seeing us play live and just the energy of, of everything that's happening, you know, they just, they had a great time. And that, you know, that's, I love that. I love to, I remember when I went to my first show, I mean, I felt the same way. I was like, oh my God, what's mm -hmm. happening right now? You know? And you just, you know, it's, it's, it's awesome to see their their excitement and everything towards mm. uh, towards us and the music. Yeah. That's awesome. That's really cool. <laughs> how, many, how many kids were there? And was it like all high school? I don't know. Okay. Yeah, it's it was mainly like, like high school and Got middle it. school. Uh, I know there was some college uh, people that were there as well. But for the most part, it was, I would say, more high school. So it was cool. I mean, you know, some of these guys, they, they, they might, you know, they know what a concert is, so they kind of maybe right. know what to expect, but not fully. You did, do you guys, uh, but, yeah, do you guys have any angry parents yeah. after? <laughs> no, actually, no parents. fun fact, <laughs> I will say, no, I will say this, fun fact, my mom went to see me play at that show for the very first time mm -hmm. ever. My mom has never been to any one of my shows. I don't think she's ever been interested in anything that I've done. Has she ever like listened so to Bloodlines ever? Like, have you shown her? She did. She did. I remember one time I showed her. I showed her Deadlock. I believe in the car. I was so hyped when we made that song. I was like, "Mom, you have to hear this song. Like, you have to hear what I'm doing. Like, please just listen to it." And I remember we were driving to. I think we were driving to Costco or something. I forget. So I, I, I turn it on and I'm like, and, and, you know, I kind of have it a little low and she can't, she's like, turn it up a little bit. So I'm there and I'm turning it up. And then as soon as Alexa starts singing, my mom just like completely tunes out. And it was like, all, it was like the most heartbreaking thing Aww. ever. I was like, oh, uh -huh. you hate it. Yeah. She, she just, you know, it's not really her mm -hmm. thing, which, you know, it's, it's fine. She never really like, she never really told me not to be in a band or anything like that. You know, my mom's been supportive in her own way. That's just not her type For of sure. music, you know, but to, just to have her there, see me play that one show was just like, that meant everything. So, what, me. what did she say yeah. after that one? Did she... <laughs> <laughs> she was just like, she was like, I have fun. <laughs> 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 
just like you know how any other oh. how, you know she was just trying to be nice yeah. but yeah she was just she she knew that i was just glad that she came you know that's cool um yeah switching back over to uh havel um what is your guys favorite uh song personally on uh on the ep so i'll start mine is definitely devil okay and it's not just because brooke is on it but i i just really love the i guess the lyrical content to me really speaks to me personally just i really love that type of warfare i guess that we're kind of having in the song with with the devil Mm -hmm. It's like, you know, we're kind of having a conversation with him almost. And I, I love that, you know, and especially, you know, of course, the breakdown is, you know, to, us, crazy. to me, it's like <laughs> the heaviest thing that we've ever done. But uh, yeah, I absolutely love, you know, just the lyrical content of it. Playing it is like super fun and super cool. Um, so yeah, Devil for me is my favorite one. I think uh, I would have to agree. Uh Mine too, for sure. It's devil. Uh, for I think different reasons. Uh, I think musically, that's one of like my favorite songs that I've done. Like, like guitar wise, rhythmically, I tried a lot of different things, and I think it came together so well. And I'm just really, really proud of like of that song. Uh, the lyrics are great, and you know, Brooke is amazing. But mm-hmm. that's that's. My favorite one for sure. Speaking of Brooke being on uh, Devil, like, how did that come about? Was that you guys reaching out? Was that Jason being? So like, oh, it's a so crazy story. So let's hear it. Right, let's yeah, it, it really is. Um, so Daniel, you want to? Yeah, it? Uh, I'll let him know. So our older vocalist, um, he lived up in Austin. <laughs> uh, you know, he moved up there you know, a few years back, but we're friends. We keep in touch and like we message each other here and then. Um, but I remember he came down a couple years ago and he mentioned like, Oh, like I ran into Brooke, like from impending doom. And we were like, what? That's crazy. Like, how did that even happen? He's like, yeah, like he worked for the company that I used to work at and blah, blah, blah. Like we've hung out a couple times here and there. So I've always kept that like in the back of my mind. And when we were pretty much finishing up this EP, we knew that we needed someone, uh, not needed someone, but we wanted someone to be featured in it. We didn't know what song, we didn't know who, uh, we didn't know how we were going to do it, but we knew that it would be a good strategy, I guess, to like have someone included into it. Um, Mm -hmm. And I think we finished Devil and we're riding back on the way home and we're trying to like figure out who would be like the right fit for this song and I think I was like in and out of sleep, like in the back seat, like driving back, and Aldo and Ale- uh, Alexis were talking about it. And then I might have like overheard them say, like, "Oh, I think Brooke, like Brooke, would be like the one. Like, we don't know if he'll do it. Like, I don't even know how to get in contact with him." And I was like, "Let me try something." So I, I messaged my friend, and he messaged him, and like within twenty, thirty minutes. Um, he like responded and he was like, I listened to the song. Like I'm down, like, let's do it. And I told the guys and they were like, no way that this is happening. Like it <laughs> happened so quick. Like it, it was so fast. That's so yeah, cool. Like, so quickly. Yeah. You know, what's interesting about his feature is when, uh, when my wife and I were listening through uh, Havel for the first time and it got to devil and he did his part. I was like, this sounds like, like obviously man of God, Brooke is man of God, but it sounded more like man of God than it did like Brooke from impending doom which i thought was really cool because it sounded like man of god it sounded like man of god's music like i i just thought that was really cool because i've never i've heard brooke do countless guest vocals and they're just absolutely brutal and it's through like just the most brutal breakdown but this had like the electronic the trap beat and it was just really really cool so i really liked hearing that side of brooke go uh going into other people's projects right and so, like, the song was pretty much done, and we had Alexis, like, half of his vocals. I think we had, like, the choruses and then, like, a verse. And then we were listening to it back, like, over and over again. We're like, I think I think Brooke has to be the one that, that does it. So just to reiterate what you just said, but, yeah. Mm-hmm. That's yep. awesome. Yeah. <laughs> Are you guys going to uh, 
Are, are you guys going to try to play a show with uh, with Doom so he could come out and do that live with you guys? <laughs> it would be a dream, probably. Oh, man. Yeah, the, we would definitely want to. Yeah, we... That'd be have so you guys sick. played that, that live be... at any of your recent shows? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. We played yes. it twice. Yeah, the last two... Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay, and Alexis does his part live, I'm yeah. assuming? Yeah, for now. Okay. Yes. And then Danny Batola... Mm-hmm. Uh, he did Brooks' part in one of the last shows that we did. Right. Um, yeah. So he did Brooks' part, but then yeah, then Alexis. Alexis will do the whole mm-hmm. thing, you know, if he has to. Mm-hmm. That's, That's cool. Awesome. We've talked a lot about uh, faith and uh, just spiritual aspects of this. Um, I like asking artists or bands uh, this at the end. What is one thing um, someone who someone's listening to this podcast they haven't heard Havel yet? So afterwards they turn on Havel what is one thing you want them to take away from it I think the one thing that I would like for them to take away from this or from from the EP is that it's just like how Matthew was saying I think specifically in that verse in Ecclesiastes where you know maybe sometimes life is not fair but that doesn't mean that God is not real and that God is unjust in any way um I I would really hope, and I, I think some people have, but I would really hope that people dive into the meaning of the word Hebel for themselves and and study it and see kind of where our hearts were when we when we wrote this. Um, and of course, you know, if they can see God in a different perspective or in a new way, uh, to me, that's that's a home run. I mean, that's what it's all about. You know, is is helping someone either in their faith now or helping someone see something different that might not be a believer and giving them a new perspective on how we see God as individuals or as a band. Mm. No matter what season you're going through, uh, through your life, whether it's something good or something not so good, um, that Jesus is there and that we are offered such a great opportunity to be able to go through those things with him and to experience those things. And it's even like through your doubt, through your anger, through your resentment, through your pain, through your discomfort, through your unknowingness, through your happiness, it's all about experiencing it with your creator. And we get the privilege of doing that. And it's okay to ask questions or to be doubtful and, you know, but what we don't want is to cut yourself off from life, from our life force, you know? And if you run to Jesus with those things, he will, you know, gladly answer and reveal things to you and the Holy spirit will guide you and, and love on you and, and, you know, guide you the right way. And, and I know our music is heavy and it's guitars and frequencies clashing together and all those things, but um, there's a meaning and there's a purpose. And if you take all that away, it's that Jesus loves you and that Jesus cares for you and he loves you and he wants to know you and he wants you to know him. And that's all that I want people to know. Wow. That is a perfect way to, uh, to end this episode. Thank you guys so much for coming on. Uh, that was Thanks amazing. This conversation us. truly blessed me. I hope it blesses those of you who are listening to it. If you guys want to plug in your guys information, uh, before we, uh, we head to an end. Sure. Yeah. Everything is, everything is at bloodlines, Texas, uh, Facebook, Instagram, uh youtube do we still have a youtube yeah i think we still have a youtube channel like face down <laughs> we don't post on that. there but if, you, yeah. <laughs> if y'all want to if y'all want to follow us on youtube as well uh spotify same thing bloodlines texas do you want to buy something that bloodlines, texas. Uh, face down merch now bloodlines, yeah, yes. merch down. Really bloodlines has some of the sickest yeah. merch in the game they really do thank you so much thank you <laughs> thank you thank you yeah that's pretty much yeah, it yeah we we work hard for yeah. that Awesome. Yeah, and and again, if there's anybody here that hasn't checked out uh, Havel or has listened to it, it's on Spotify, it's on Apple Music, it's on YouTube. Even I think 
check it out, jam it, and let us know what you think. Awesome. And we love reaction videos. So if you ever want to do <laughs> yes, that, Chris. Yeah, we watch them all. So <laughs> Chris, your reaction video was amazing. Thank you, Chris. <laughs> Thanks, guys. <laughs> Uh, it was, uh, it's such a pleasure getting to, to listen to your guys' music. I, every single thing that comes out, I'm definitely looking forward to it. <laughs> yeah, we, we love to see people headbang and, and uh, you know, react to the songs, it, <laughs> especially in the parts that, that get us most excited. I love to see when people like, you know, react, or I like to see their reaction to a certain part of the song. It's like, yeah, yeah. I react yeah. the same way, you know? that's awesome Uh, so awesome all right everybody thank you so much for listening and or watching to this episode of the kingdom court podcast and as well a special thank you to aldo matthew and daniel from bloodlines for joining us on this episode our our kind of outro ending was a little bit of a (laughs) a rushed mess and sorry about um, losing a little bit of Matthew in the last third of the podcast there. We, we had some technical difficulties and connection issues Um, still working out the kinks here, but uh, hopefully we'll have that all sorted out soon. And thank you so much to our core givers on Patreon, Jonathan Lyman and my brother Peter from Christian metal source. You guys rock. Thank you. And thank you to all of our other Patreon supporters. You guys are really helping uh, make a difference and financially backing us on this project. Uh, We can't wait to potentially see you again this year. But uh, if that doesn't end up happening, we will see you guys in the new year. But uh, yeah, stay tuned. It'll be awesome. (laughs) All right. Thanks, guys. Have a good one. Peace.